In 10 years, what's going to be in the water? So here we are on October 4th, and our goal in terms of the transition is to have the um, new integrated Harvard library in place by the summer of 2012. <laughs> my grandfather and grandmother and my father were all librarians, and I grew up in the library as a physical space, and, and I'm in Widener, and I love this physical space. Um, but I spend a great deal of my time um, in digital space, and that's where much of my work occurs now. Um, at this point, it seems that one in three requests for a book involves helping someone get to the digital content. Well, we've started um, in LIS working with libraries to collect um, boring digital content that's quickly changed. But I think more and more content is going to be created and solely distributed in electronic means and not have an analog component. You know, one of the great lessons we have learned from the history of books, which is a burgeoning field of study, is that one medium does not displace another. We've discovered fairly recently that publishing manuscripts, that is, manuscript editions, flourished long after Gutenberg. And right? an old book, a unique book, a manuscript, is like a treasure chest. And inside, you have no idea what you're going to find. Collection, collection. And when MP3 started to show up, I thought, no, there's, there's no way. I'm as about as serious as it gets for collecting records and these sorts of things. But the truth of the matter is, is that storage is a burden and I don't listen to any less music now than I did, I listen to more, but. I... Digital media will never replace first-hand encounters with original works of art, books, or artifacts, but it can augment and enhance those encounters. What we aspire to is that once you're in any space, virtual or physical, to do with the library, that you have access to everywhere else. So part of our job is to get the undergraduates past the intimidation factor of this building and the entrance to it to come in and see what they can find here. Yeah, that's pretty intimidating. Um, so what do you use the library for? I use the library mostly to study. It's just a quiet place. It's not my room. Usually cleaner. Already we see people making use of library resources much more broadly across the university rather than coming to a central place doesn't mean that we don't need physical locations for libraries, but it does mean that the role of those physical locations will change. Um, so here you are studying outside in the shadow of the library. Why aren't you in the library? Hmm. I'm not in the library because to be in the library, you have to uh, first swipe in, uh, then find a seat when it's often crowded. Uh, and then on the way out, there's a line to uh, take your bags past security. So this is just a lot faster for me. If I can get all this stuff online, why am I going to go to the library for it? Well, so it depends what you mean by going to the library for it. As well, the library may actually be the space on your computer, which is part of your laboratory notebook, and it's an integrated something in the way you do your research. This means that the library itself will be, I think, a place that will be pulsating with energy and creativity, uh, it won't be just a quiet study hall. In 10 years, do you expect the physical library spaces to be quieter, louder? Uh, <laughs> um, both. I, I think the, the before and the after, as well as the during, um, are increasingly going to be part of the social dimension of libraries as institutions. So I think our jobs are going to be providing content information, but how it gets provided is going to keep changing. Um, so I think the package in which we provide it isn't really important anymore. I think My greatest fear as librarian right now uh, is that people will miss the really great stuff because the mediocre stuff is so easy to find now. In my conversations with faculty, there is a huge desire for a closer relationship to the libraries and also a huge respect. Librarians have a sort of network of human expertise that should mirror the network of information that sits 
um, in the cloud. With everything that we know about the institution and about how to answer questions and how to work with people who may not know exactly what it is that they're looking for. At the law school, we have a, a little mantra that we teach um, our students when they first come in. And we tell them, don't waste any more than five minutes on anything. Come to us. We are envisioning uh, um, uh, a gesture-based system where you can move uh, through the universe, almost swim through it. And I see us making a transition into a community cloud that's unlike the current collective. With linked open data, we have the ability to go from kind of silos of data that are housed, you know, at each institution to hopefully a network of data. Uh, libraries participating more in the production of knowledge uh, in addition to the dissemination of knowledge. Uh, so to be more of a mirror to the community that's using it. So we're starting to do this here, but to reflect back how the community is engaging with it. Because they can build a whole ecosystem of tools, of visualization tools, or different mashups that you can't even really uh, imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Librarians on the ground need 20% of their time to try new things. And librarians that are administering these librarians need to let go of 20% of what they call their own. <laughs> That's right. Give up ground and then let's try new things. And I, so I think the kinds of changes that will take place will mean that we will never be in sort of a steady state but we will never be in this sort of, I think we won't be in this massive change environment we're in right now. And I think people do fall in love with these libraries. And so there is this important affective, emotional component to how people do research and think about the opportunities here, is this is a place where you can pursue literally any question. To, so to clarify my previous statement, I am still a big fan of the library and I'm already regretting graduating so that How long do we have to keep innovating? Forever. <laughs> <laughs>